okay? And if you're wondering, well, what's a static variable? I, it sounds familiar, but I don't, don't remember what it is. We're gonna go over all of that. And when you would use a static variable rather than a non-static variable, which is all of the variables that you included in your class thus far, okay? All right. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen with you and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, before we do, are there any, you don't have to say no, you can just, if you have a question, I'm gonna just pause and wait. So if you have a question, you can either, you can turn your microphone at, on and ask. Kelvin, hmm, we have some people joining that I, I don't know. Perhaps they're friends of yours that, from other schools that just want a review, that's fine with me. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know at this time. I'll take a second to pause and you can ask them or type them. Okay then, so let's go ahead and get started. Correct, Francis, no submission for Lesson 81. Um, so it's my obligation to post something every day and this is in effect our you know our activity for the day it's our you know we're meeting today we're going to go over the lesson and we're going to build on it a little bit from there okay so no no submission necessary for lesson 81 can we still review the addition of the new private instance variable courses before we do yes yeah, so Brittany, we're going to yeah, yeah. Before we do lesson 81, we're going to go over lesson 80. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you. I'm going to start presenting my entire screen. Jada, I don't know what the story is with um, attendance. All that I'm, I was asked to do was basically just keep track of people who were not turning in anything at all. So with that said, there were a few of you, uh, at least with Lesson 80, I was just looking over it. There were 14 people in total that did not submit. Um, in fact, there were actually fewer if you were one of those people that have a duplicate account, so I know crazy basketball, whoever you are, um, you did not yet delete it. You, I'm guessing rather than just simply changing your name, you created a new account. So if you're somebody with two accounts, if you could just tell me, you know, which one you want me to delete, or if you could just delete yourself, if you have a duplicate duplicate account, because we have about 88 or 89 people signed up for the Google Classroom, and we only have, I think, 85 students among the three classes. So um, again, just use a name that identifies yourself clearly of who you are. That way, when I keep track of the assignments and all that stuff, I know who's turning it in and who isn't. And then in terms of attendance, all that I know um, from my end is that I'm supposed to report to the administration students who have not yet made any sort of contact whatsoever through this remote learning process. All right. So I don't know that attendance is being, I don't believe attendance is being taken or anything like that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at, I have two replets open, one uh, from lesson 79, one from lesson 80. So I'm going to just build upon lesson 79 and rather than just show you the finished product we can sort of type through it and uh, if I forget anything I can just go back and reference the completed version so let's go ahead and take a look at um, what we finished up the other day all right so we have our student class which was pretty basic just the name student ID grade level we had two constructors one of which was a default constructor and then we had a bunch of get and set methods. And that was really all that we had. Uh, the lesson 80 instructions asked you to initialize a list, uh, an array list called courses. 
Um, and I suspect we may have had some trouble with that unless you went back to the array list chapter and really um, paid attention to the steps necessary in order to declare, uh, create, and then actually add um, values or rather add objects to that list. In fact, I had forgotten one of the steps myself and was getting an error message for a while when I was running it. So um, I anticipate a number of you made the same sort of mistake initially. And uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at, oh, it says I'm no longer presenting. Let me go back. Can everyone, can you guys still see that I'm, can you see now that I'm in Replit? Can you see that I'm in Replit? If not, just type no. Hmm. Okay, so let me go back. Resume your presentation. For some, oh, someone else was presenting. Okay, click pin to screen. Stop screen sharing. All right, resume presentation. Can everybody see that I'm presenting again now? Okay, excellent, excellent. All right, so back to it. So we are gonna have a new private instance variable. It is going to be an array list of strings, okay? So array list string called courses. So this would be our declaration of the list called courses. Now we need to um, we need to create it with with a size. So if we don't do this next step, then when we try to add things to the courses and then eventually print those values, we're going to get a null pointer exception. So in our constructor, we're going to say courses is assigned to array list string open close parentheses semicolon okay and that's a line of code that i suspect a number of people left out and we can include that for the default construct uh, we'll leave it out for the con default constructor for now okay it's not necessary all right um one of the things that i'd like to point out to you is that and and the reason i want to point this out is i think we get sort of stuck um thinking that every class is the same, that, that there, is, there is somewhat of a formulaic approach to writing these classes, but not every one is exactly the same. So notice that we have name, student ID, and grade level, all of which are referenced in some way or corresponding in some way to these three formal parameters here in the constructor header, okay? Notice that courses, however, though, is not a, courses is not one of the parameters um, and it doesn't need to be so just because you have a private instance variable here doesn't mean that it has to go in the constructor header all right uh, somebody else is trying to join hi there joseph okay all right just make sure everybody's yep hi joseph make sure your uh the microphone's turned off looks like it is terrific okay so back to it all right now we we need to take care of the conditionals here so if a student object uh, if a student object's grade level is nine then the courses that we want to add are algebra one global one living environment and computer science essentials so let's go ahead and do that now again we are sort of used to in most of these examples the constructor just being very sort of bare bones where all it does is initialize some of the um some or all of the private instance variables that are listed above the constructor. Well, we can have loops, we can have conditionals um, in our constructor as well to make it more complex, okay? So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to start by saying if the grade level equals equals nine, 
then what I want to do, all right, hang on, somebody's trying to get added. So then what we want to do is add those courses to the courses list. So we're going to say courses.add, courses.add algebra one, courses.add global one, courses.add living in environment, courses.add computer science essentials. Okay, so then we just have a single conditional chain it becomes a rather repetitive process. Hang on, we got somebody else joining. Mason Hartman. Okay. Is this someone that we know? Mason? I don't I certainly don't know a Mason. Well welcome. Welcome, Mason. Okay, welcome. All right, so back to it. Now we're going to have an else if grade level equals equals 10. So this would be if they're in the 10th grade. We want to add the appropriate courses to their courses list. So I'm just going to copy what I had above, paste it, and just slightly you know, edit the courses that are there. This will save me some time. So we have geometry, global two, chemistry, and computer science principles. It was AP computer science principles. Next up, we're going to have another else if, if the grade level equals equals 11, then we're going to add the next set of courses. So algebra two and trig. We have US history. I believe it was physics. And of course, the course that we are in now, AP Computer Science A. And let's take care of our last possible valid entry. Grade level equals equals 12. Then the courses to be added. On just a second. The courses that we're going to add are the following. So we're going to be taking pre-calc, uh, I believe it was economics, accounting, and cyber security. Okay. Now, so those were our valid entries. So a student could be in either the 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. Those were the only valid integers that we wanted to allow a user to put in when they created a student object. If they enter a number other than 9, 10, 11, or 12 as the, sorry, as the grade level, then we want to have sort of this catch where we tell them, hang on just a second, where we tell them, hey, please enter, please try again, or, or enter in a valid uh, grade level, okay? All right, so we're gonna just simply say system, we can have a system dot out dot print ln, please enter a valid grade level, nine through 12, okay? And that will appear to the user if they try to create an object that is a number other than 9, 10, 11, or 12, okay? So that covers this uh, explore activity um, number one, A, B, C, and D, as well as E. So let's now go ahead and create a new method called print courses, which will print each course taken by a student. And before we do that, I'm just going to go back to our Google Classroom conference and see if you have any questions.
Yes, it should be principles, L-E-S. Thank you, I can fix that. No, Jess, um, as Matthew said, you cannot, we're not using the dot equals, you, you, we're not using the dot equals method. Um, we can use it for uh, integers, but integer objects, not integer primitive data types. So I think we looked at a question fairly recently where we did use dot equals for a number, but that number had been wrapped and it was an integer object, not a primitive data type integer, okay? Everybody all good? All right, so back to it. Let's go ahead and now take a look at the print courses method. So we've finished up our constructor here, which is more robust than it was before. And we're going to add this method called print courses. So we actually want something to print. So we're going to make the return type of the method void. And we're going to have print courses, no parameter necessary. We know that in order to print something from a list, we are going to use a for loop. So I'm just going to use a standard for loop header. I is less than the courses, remember, dot size. We use size for lists. We use dot length for arrays. I plus plus. Now you could use a for each loop if you like, and we can rewrite it um, using a for each loop. And we're going to system got out print ln, and we're going to print each course. So the name of the list is courses. Dot. We use the get method to get each course, not not using the square brackets. Again, that's for arrays, not lists. And i. So that will get each element in the list at position or at index i. And there's our print courses method. Okay, I'm going to go back to our main method, and we had all this stuff from the last time that we met, so I didn't edit any of that. It's the same as it was. Let's see if I can move this a little bit. All right, then, so we have, we have two different um, student objects, Tom and Emily, and we printed up a bunch of different things using some of the set methods, some of the get methods, etc. cetera. Um, but now we want to print the courses for each student object. So I'm just going to sort of draw this. Oops. I'm going to draw a line so that we know what it was that we were working on last time and what we're doing now. And I'm going to call upon the print courses method for Tom. So tom.printcourses and emily.printcourses, okay? And let's see how those work out for us. Hmm. Okay. I think we need we I think maybe Brittany had mentioned this before and I had glazed over it. Yes, the new keyword. Thanks, Brittany. So we're gonna go back to student class real quick. We're gonna go up to our constructor right here. We were missing the new keyword. Thank you, Brittany. She had brought that to us, brought that to our attention a while ago. I just missed that. All right. So we're going to run it again, and okay, private array list cannot find symbol. Should be the other way around, I think. Give me a second. I believe we should have courses first. Hmm, no, private array list string courses. Interesting. Okay. So give me just a second. We're going to go back, courses, new array list, string, private array list, string, courses. Hmm. Private array list, string, courses. Ah, okay, that's why. 
I don't have the import in this in this replit here. So we're going to import java.util.star and back to our main method. Now we should be good to go. And there we go. All right, so we have everything here was from our last meeting and corresponds to everything that's in the main method there and everything beneath it. So we have pre-calc, economics, accounting, and cybersecurity are the courses that Tom is taking. And we got a null pointer exception for the courses it looks like that Emily is taking. So I suppose we didn't add any courses. Ah, it's because Emily was constructed using the, um, she was constructed using the, uh, what you call it, the uh, default constructor. Okay, so we could add courses to her list, or what we could do. Someone has a comment. Add a check to the print courses method. Add a check. Where was the new keyword added? We'll go back and show you that in a second. Thanks, Francis. You got it. Yep, the import. What do you mean by that, Matthew? Add a check to the print courses method. Like if, meaning a conditional statement, if the courses is null. Hmm. Okay. I suppose we could explore that. So in that method, in the print courses, you're saying if um, courses dot equals null. I'm trying to see if it's in black or a different color. See if that works. What do you think, Matthew? Works, okay, let's take a look. So if courses dot equals null, well, we would want does not equal, right? So does not equal null, let's try that. Then we want to go through it. And then if it is null, just do nothing. So let's see how that works out. This is how we get better. We test things, we evaluate, and then we try again. All right, so once again, we got the null pointer exception, student.printcourses, line 93, and in the main, line 25. So we're gonna go back, line 93, if courses does not equal null, then we'll go ahead and print the courses. Hmm. Thoughts? Oh, so you think this works. If courses equals equals null, invalid grade used, else, okay, let's see how that goes. That looks pretty good. So if courses equals, if courses equals equals null, then we're going to system, system dot out dot print ln you, um, you, you did not initialize any courses for this student object. Okay. And then we're going to have else we'll have our for loop inside that all right let's see how this works out for us back to it okay let's see now you did not initialize must be missing a there we go. Make sure we've got all our curly brackets for the if, for the else, for the method, 
that would be we might have an extra that would be for the class yep so let's get rid of this extra one right here and we should now be good to go excellent so we have pre-calc economics accounting and cybersecurity for the tom student object and then it printed you did not initialize any courses for this student object when we tried to use the print course method for emily so that was great thanks matthew and we'll take a minute to take a we'll take a minute to see if there are any questions thus far No questions? All right, sounds good. So what we're gonna do is um, we are going to now examine adding a two string method. And then we're also gonna examine this concept of uh, incorporating a static variable. So we're gonna go back. We are going to go back to our student class and we're gonna add a Two string method. So we're going to have public, public string, two string. And we are going to print or rather return any relevant information about a student object. So return, what is some relevant information? Well, the name. So everything that we see printed basically here, where it says Tom O'Neill 1 and 12, so the student's name, their ID, and their grade level, okay? And then perhaps we could even print the courses that are associated with that object as well, okay? So let's go ahead and work on the two-string method right now. All right, so we're gonna return student name. So we're gonna have name, colon, space, and we're going to concatenate that with uh, the get name method. So get name. And then we're going to concatenate that with, let's see, if we want it to be vertical, we don't want it necessarily all on the same line. Um, we can go with the backslash n, and then we can say student ID colon space. Concatenate that with the get ID method. And we'll concatenate that with another string backslash n and their grade level. Grade level colon space. Concatenate that with get grade level. Okay. And then finally, let's see if we can. Hmm. I don't think we'll be able to print the courses or get the courses in the two string method. Um, it's possible, but first, let's just test to make sure that this works just using the, the name, the ID, and the grade level, okay? So that's our two string method. We're gonna return the name, or we're gonna return name colon, the get name, new line, student ID should have the ID next to it, new line, grade level, and then the student's grade level. So let's go ahead and test out this two string method. And then we'll go ahead and see if we can um, include the courses that each individual student is taking as well in our two string method, okay? So we're gonna go back to the main method. And rather than say tom.getName, um, dot get whatever we don't need to do that all I all I have to say is system dot out print ln Tom which is a student object okay and we know that of course without the two string method what would print would be the hexadecimal representation of that object all right but now that we have the two string method it will be automatically called upon so if we go ahead and run this All right, so we've got some curly bracket issues back in the student class. Let's see, so there's our two string. That closes out the, what does that close out? 
Oh, that closes out the print courses. Okay. So that should be up here. That's closed out. And that closes out our student class. All right, should we, be, we should be back in business. Um, once again, I'm just going to add a, just this sort of line here. Okay. Just to break it up for us nicely. And... We're waiting. Okay, and there we go. So we have name, Tom O'Neill, student ID, one, grade level 12. So our two-string method worked successfully. Um, if we're feeling a little ambitious, which I think we are, we can go ahead and see how we might be able to manipulate uh, the two-string method to also print the courses that are associated with this particular object. We may have to change the print courses method, um, but we can play around with that and see what happens as well. So we're back to the student class, and we're going to do it by just saying courses. So let's put that on a new line as well. Okay, so backslash and courses. And we'll concatenate that with just simply saying uh, print courses. Now, I don't think this is going to work, but we'll soon find out. All right, back to the main method. I'm going to go ahead and run it again. So in addition to having this information, we are hopeful that it will also print pre-calc, economics, accounting, and cybersecurity, but I'm not, I'm not confident that it will. But sometimes, sometimes we surprise ourselves. All right, so let's see. We may have to, again, yep. So print courses, error, uh, uh, student java.109, error, void type not allowed here. So let's go back to our print courses method. And rather than make the return type void, we can make it um, string because each course in the courses list is in fact a string. So let's make the return type string. And instead of printing, we will return. So let's try that. Okay. And we might be successful now. So let's just make sure we don't have any syntax errors. Looks good. I'm going to go back. I'm going to take a look and see if you have any comments. Nope. All right. So back back to it. Back to our main method. Let's see how this works now. Missing return statement. Interesting. In line 104. So we're back to student.java. Okay. So in our print courses method, um, I should really rename it get courses at this point because it's not actually printing anything, but I then have to go back into the main method and change change all that. So I'm going to just leave it for now. I have return. Interesting. Okay. So there needs to be a return after the conditional statement. So, hmm. Okay. I think what we would need to do is build a string representation of the courses. Uh, hmm. Thinking, thinking, thinking. What we really want to do is return some variable, and we can call it all courses. OK. So we'll have to initialize that here, all courses. And instead of returning courses.getI in the loop, what we're going to do is we're going to add each course to the all courses variable. So all courses concatenated with courses.getI. Hang on a second. Prabayan is trying to come in here. Welcome, Prabayan. All right, I believe this is going to work now. So 
Um, you have to have a return statement at the end of the method. Basically, you need that return statement before the last curly bracket, just before the last curly bracket. So instead of returning each course um, one by one, so you know what? They're going to concatenate. They're going to be all sort of like smushed together. So we're going to have all courses concatenated with, let's do a new line. Okay, so then each course will print or will be returned on a new line. So let's try this now. Okay, so back to our main method. Go ahead and run it. Interesting. Okay, let's see what kind of feedback we're getting now. Variable all courses might not have been initialized. Return all courses. Ah. Okay, so all courses was declared but not initialized. That's an easy fix. So we're just going to initialize it to a blank string. Back to the main method. Go ahead and run it. And there we go. So work successfully. We now have a pretty comprehensive two-string method that prints the student's name their ID, their grade level, and then it prints all of the courses that they're enrolled in. So this is terrific, okay? Um, all right, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna come back to our conference, and before we talk about the static variable, I'd like to hear any thoughts or comments, questions you have about the two-string method. Yep, you got it, Matthew. You were one step ahead. All right, um, any questions or comments about the two-string method? Do you want to take a look at it? Everybody was following along pretty well. Everybody's good. If not, just let me know. Can you go back to the method? Yep. So you can see both the print courses method as well as the two string method okay and i'll just it's 12 43 i'll leave that up for about two minutes so everybody can add those to their own classes if they haven't done so already and if there is anything that you don't understand or um right now if there's not if there's something you don't understand right now please please ask and if you uh later on you're reviewing all this stuff and there's something you don't understand feel free to post it on our google classroom page or free feel free to send me an email uh you know to my t o'neill for at schools.nyc.gov if you you know think of something later on that you weren't able to think of now All right, how are we doing? On the left of your screen, what are main.class and student.class files? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, they're a bunch of gibberish. You take a look here, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it looks like that. Um, but if you recall from jCreator, every Java file has a class file as well. So I'm not exactly sure what's in there, but that's those those got created automatically. I did not. So when I added a new file, um, I just typed in student.java, and then I I guess once I ran all that stuff, the dot class, the main dot class, and the student dot class got created on their own. So I didn't create those.
Right. That makes sense, Matthew. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, Tanman. All right. So it looks like we're in a good place. Um, it's 1246. We'll take about another probably 15 minutes to get through this second part, which is going to discuss this concept of a static variable as well as a static method. So all of the instance variables and methods we've been working with over the last two activities were non-static. Does anybody remember the difference between non-static and static, what those things mean? And you can just type it right into the, the chat. Okay, anybody else want to share out? All right, so static, something that interactable. So, okay, Wilson, I think, right, you're thinking back to when we did, um, uh, like the user could, could, um, could type things in and, and whatnot. And it can be used in that way, but what a static, what static really means is that it's for the whole class. For static method, I don't think you need an object to call on it. That's exactly right. I think static means it will remain the same for the entire class. Yep, pretty much, Kevin. So we have static methods and we have non-static methods. We have static variables and we have non-static variables. So the non-static static variables are the ones that belong to individual objects, whereas a static variable is something that encapsulates data for the entire class. So can anybody think of a variable that we might want or need in a student class that would, and that variable would be used for the entire class. You wouldn't have one for each individual object. What's something that we could keep track of that would be a variable for the entire class? Anybody? Okay, the stu where the um, yeah the school um, the school name, but then that wouldn't necessarily need to be in a variable because I, I guess it could be, and then it could be referenced. Um, it could be referenced, but it's never going to change. So let's think of some yep GPA. Let's think of some maybe think of something else. Um, what do we always what do, I, I've said this before, but. What do we love to do in computer science? We love to we love to code. What else? Count. Yes, we love to. Yep, we love to learn. We love to count things. So let's go ahead and create a count variable that counts how many students there are in in the in the class, or how many student objects have been created. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a new variable up at the top, right underneath our courses variable. It's still going to be private. Now, the next keyword or the next word will be a keyword static, so private static, then it's type. So it's going to be an int, and then we'll call it student count. Okay, student count. Now, just because in all of the previous variables we declared them and did not initialize them doesn't mean that we can't declare and initialize in the same line in this particular case. And in fact, with many static variables that are in a class, they're typically declared and initialized in the same line because when you think about it, what we're doing in the constructor is we are taking the private instance variables and we're initializing them based on the formal parameters or rather the actual parameters that are given to us 
and passing those values to those variables. In this case, we don't want to do that. We don't want the student count to be given a new value based on some actual parameter. We do, however, want the student count to change when, the, when a new student object is created. So all we have to do is between lines 16 and 17, I can create another space. It doesn't matter. Remember, this, how many spaces you have in between lines does not impact the code. So when a student object is created, I want the student count to go up by one. So I'm just going to simply write student count plus plus with the semicolon. Okay, And I can add that line of code if I want to to the default constructor as well, student count plus plus, okay? So our student count was or is zero, and then each time a student object is instantiated in the main method, this value should increase by one as a result of the student count plus plus that's in each of the two unique constructors, okay? So if we go to the main method and beneath line 30, we say system, whoops, what just happened? Something going crazy here. Okay. Um, actually, in fact, let's go back to student.java. And one thing that we forgot. So let's have a corresponding method, public, uh, let's see, the return type. Well, we want to print the count. So we can make it public void print, print count. And system.out.print ln. Ah, that's not, okay. All right, so one of the things that I forgot to mention, and I do, if we were using jCreator, you wouldn't need to do this, but because we're using a different type of platform to do our coding here, um, and this is a good lesson because you might see this in some multiple choice questions. So because the student class, student, the student file, I should say, student.java, is not in the same file as the main method, um, we are going to have to, in order to use this print count method. We're not going to be able to just say print count. We're going to have to use the name of the class, which is student. All right. And I did this over here. So, okay. So um, another thing that I forgot to include was static. So it's a static variable. So we need to make it a static method as well. Static methods can reference variables that are static, okay, but they're not compatible if one is non-static and the other is static. So we're going to have public static void print count, and we're going to say system.outprint ln student count, student count variable. I believe that's what I called it. I'm going to go back up and just double check. Student count, student count, okay, system.outprint print ln student count. All right, so we're going to go back to the main method. And again, so rather than just saying print count, which I believe we would be able to do in jCreator, because that allows us to have, uh, that would allow us to have this student class and then the main method inside of it. And this doesn't, this behaves a little bit differently. Okay. So what we have to do is say student because that's the name of the class, right? It's right. We said static means that it's a class method or it's a class variable. So we're not we're not invoking the method on an object. We're invoking the method on the entire class. So instead of saying object dot method, we're going to say the class name dot method. So student dot print course, or sorry, print count, and Let's see, uh, let's see what happens here. I'm just going to add another like break, break line okay. and print count. So we've, we've created or instantiated two students, Tom and Emily. 
So our count should be two. So let's see, let's see if it works. Oh, forgot the, all right, semicolon, run it again. All right, looking good, and there it is, two, okay? And we can even beef this up a little bit, system.outprint, and we'll include a string student, right up in there. Student count colon close quote cat made it and there we go. So let's go back. We'll run it again And it should now say student count colon space and then a two so it's a, just a little bit more um, Readable a little bit more comprehensive and user uh, user friendly All right, and there it is student count two. so just to make sure that it is working what I'm going to do before that line of code, of course, because if I did it after, um, well, actually, let it, let's do it after. So let's create a new student object. So student, uh, we'll use my brother's name, Brian, equals new student. And so his name, Brian O'Neill. Okay. His ID and his grade level. We'll say he's in the 11th grade. Okay. Actually, just for fun, he was, he's two years, my brother is exactly, I don't know if I ever told, my brother is exactly two years younger than me. We were born on the same day, two years apart. Okay. All right, so now we're going to say count And count should now, student count should be, it'll print, it'll still say student count two, because we have that line 36. But now in line 39, since we instantiated a new student object, it should say student count three, and it does. Okay, so our print count method, which is a static method, references a static variable in uh, the count. So student count is a static variable, and both work successfully. Okay. Can't you make a count variable without it being static? All right, so Francis, um, you could, right? But some variables, you want them to be static, okay? If I went back and changed this variable to a non-static, non-static, okay? And it was just private static in student count. Now the student count would, would belong to each individual object rather than the whole class, okay? So you would have to do something for each and every student object rather than for the whole class. So some information, excuse me, rather some data, you want to belong to the whole class and then some data you want to be specific to each object. So it's we're better off with this variable being static than non-static, okay? And you can you can play around with that and see how it impacts the uh, just sort of the overall the overall program, okay? But yes, we 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 very much want that variable to be static. Um, are there any questions at this time? Does anybody have anything they'd like to share? Uh, do they want me to go back to the code that we were just looking at? I will post, so after our conference is over, I'll post all the code um, that we were just working with, okay, so everybody can see it. I think the comment section lags behind a little bit. I think just in general, everyone's internet is a little bit slower these days because everybody is on the internet. Can you show the print courses method? Absolutely, okay? So let's go back, 
We'll take a look at the print courses method. Print courses, there it is. Okay. Okay, how are we doing now? Okay, um, I do have uh, a lesson that I'm gonna post, um, that I'm gonna post in a couple couple minutes, maybe in the next half an hour or so. And that will be sort of like lessons 82 and 83. So you can work on that Thursday and Friday. And then we'll meet again on Monday. Okay, Monday at noon. So uh, lesson 82 and 83. We'll be doing something similar to what we did today. And we will go over all of that on Monday, okay? Monday at noon. Yes, Tamim, there is AP online review. Um, what I gathered so far, the lesson that they posted was actually for chapter nine, um, you know, inheritance stuff, which we had been working on. So I don't know that the review sessions that they're holding at the moment are ones that are. Uh, for units one through seven. So, you know, I mean, I'm gonna, you know, I'm checking in on the AP classroom website, AP college board website in China, get all the information that I can and pass it along to you. And of course, if there's something that I don't mention that you do see, please feel free to share it with the class, okay? Uh, again, just a quick reminder, because there are some of you who I can see like kind of did something or you may have even done the whole assignment for lesson 80, but you forgot to click turn in or submit. So if you, I'm going to record um, on people path right now who did lesson 79 and 80 and who didn't. So if you could please do me a couple of favors. Number one, remove any extra accounts you have from the Google Classroom. So if you 